Um, if Dave's not here, we're going to move into all of our announcements and actions. So uh, um, here's Bill. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, so, as you heard, I am Phil Janowitz. It's a good, good Polish name, so I have a bunch of consonants in a row. Uh, Phil Janowitz, so I'm running in the 39th district against Ed Royce. Chicken um, uh, I'll try. Okay, <laughs> Give a hand for Dave Manager. So you may be wondering, what's this guy doing? Why is he running? Why, why jump in against Ed Royce? And the big thing is, I, I'm a teacher, so I, a little bit about my background is I, I, I went to MIT, got, got degrees in uh, neuroscience and in chemistry, and got my PhD in chemistry and started teaching at Cal State Fullerton. So I was at Cal State Fullerton for six years. And what I noticed there was that it wasn't the science that was holding my students back. What was really holding them back was food security, shelter security. I had students who were first generation college students, first ones to go to college and their families. And I said, I'm so proud of you. I can't wait uh, to meet your family at graduation. And I said, oh, that's, I mean, they're not going to go. Oh, what are you talking about? Well, why not? Well, eh, they're afraid to leave the house if they may get deported. And I'm thinking, this is their proud moment of, of graduating from college, and their family should be able to share that, and they're not going to be there. And it just, you can't tell from my suit, but I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about this conversation because I realized that chemistry, as important as chemistry and science is, and we need more people like Arliss doing good science out there, I need to do more. I need to do more for my students. I need to do more for the people of 39th District. So I, I, I did have tenure, gave that up, and jumped into this because. I needed to do more for, uh, for the constituents of the 39. And the, the big things that I saw with my students were education. When they're in school, they're struggling to pay for, to pay for their um, to, to pay their tuition and fees. We've seen this in the CSU system as tuition and fees rising and rising and rising. Student loans are crippling our students. They're working 20, 30, 40 hours a week just to afford to go to school. How can I expect my students to do well when they're working 40 hours a week just to pay for it? And then the loans are crippling them for years to come. My, my wife Angie here, go ahead and wait. Here's my better half. So she's, um, so she, she's an English teacher at uh, Fullerton College there, and um, she sees the same thing as well, and, and struggling, to, struggling to pay off our own loans as well from, from all the schooling. So, um, it's really hard for our students uh, to, to get ahead and get a hold in the economy. But we see this with healthcare. I mean, yes, everyone's been talking about SB 562 on the federal level. We've seen, um, there was a big vote that happened a few weeks ago. I'm sure you're probably aware of that vote on the, uh, was the AHCA, American Healthcare Act. Yes, a terrible, terrible piece of legislation there to strip healthcare from 23 million Americans. That is not the country that we live in, where we take things away that are a right for people. They shouldn't have to choose between getting surgery to save their life and going bankrupt. We, they shouldn't be. Um, they shouldn't be, be taking out another mortgage to save their child. That's not the country that we live in. That is not the country that I think we should be living in. That's something we need to do. And we need to have good jobs. Our, so many of so many of my students, when they're struggling to, uh, to getting out of school, struggling to, to find good jobs that pay livable wage, it was very hard uh, for me to see my students do that. It was hard for anyone getting out there in the economy today to find jobs that can actually pay for this. These are big, uh, big things to me. Uh, those are large reasons why I'm running. So I, am I getting the shepherd's hook? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get shepherd's hook off the stage here. Absolutely. Oh, there's the buzzer. Uh, so if you want to learn more information, uh, please go to uh, philforhouse.com, P-H-I-L-F-O-R-H-O-U-S-E.com. I know there's also a one-pager here. Got some articles on Daily Coast as well. Uh, my campaign manager, Eric Taylor, in the back. Go ahead and go ahead and wave, wave to Eric as well. Um, so that's where you get some more information. And have you talk to people afterwards? Want to take the shepherd's hook off this one? Um, is the primary in March? 
the, the, the primary will be a, a year from last Tuesday, so it'll be about 363 days away. Yeah. Okay, so the primary is in June. I think we'll get to know our candidates uh, better and better as we get closer. Thank you, Phil. Thanks for taking the challenge. But, um, and he's running against um, Mimi Walters, but Felicity has a, way, has, a, has a message for us, and Dave said she can go, because he's very kind. What kind she's, of a congressperson? She, I've When my wife sent him a, a letter about, um, you know, with age, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our she explained to me your, your, your view on the HDA, she got a response about, thank you for support of Planned Parenthood. And my wife said, well, that's not what I asked, but now that they're on the topic, let me tell you about how I support women. So, um, the, the goal is actually... If you need to go a second line, you need to go a second line, that's fine, whatever. And represent, represent the people in the district. How are you connected? Uh, so, we, we, my husband is the tall gentleman outside of my mama, um, so, uh, who runs the campaign. Oh, I'm also a professor at Cal State Fullerton, and I'm really excited about that again. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm oh, enthusiastic oh, oh, yeah. in support of oh, uh, Cal No problem. I know you're going to be still wet in so. <laughs> no, get the phone to you. Oh, there it is. Very good. Got it. How's it going? I it to you and he yanked it out of your hand. How's it going, y'all? How's it going? Good to see you. Thank you for coming. How are you? I have a bottle of water outside. Please feel free. I'm going to pass it to you. No. Yes, thank you. Only time I'll stay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Cynthia, for setting this up. And thank you, Linda and our team, for managing hopefully the many questions we'll have tonight. I also want to thank my girlfriend, Jen, for being so supportive and entering this marathon slash sprint that is called running for office, as well as my parents who are here today and just being an inspiration uh, to me and my siblings and my sister Kathy's here as well. Thank you all for being here tonight. I think it's critical that we have these conversations. This is a tough time for our country. You know, there's gonna be a lot of time tonight to talk about what we disagree with Donald Trump on or where we think Ed Royce has gone wrong, but ultimately let's talk about solutions. Let's talk about the vision of where we want to go as a, part, as a party, as Democrats, and where we want to go as a country, as Americans. We're the Democratic Party that told the nation in the 60s, within 10 years we're going to put a man on the moon. We're the party that set up the social safety net. We're the party of civil rights. We're the party of big and bold ideas and big dreams. That's who we are as Democrats, and that's who we need to be, get to be again. We need to be the party of 100% clean energy, and universal health care. We need to be a party where everyone has access to technology, whether it's a solar panel, an electric vehicle, or it's just access to wireless internet. That's what this is about, who we are and the vision we give ahead. But even more so, we gotta get back to the basics. I grew up just down the street from here. <coughs> Took my driver's test just down the street in Fullerton, part-time jobs in Braille, La Habra, Buena Park. This is home, these are the communities I grew up in, and. The challenges we're facing today are too many of us are falling behind. You're working hard, but the wages aren't going up. You're worried about health care, and there's a whole lot of uncertainty in that. You're worried about retirement. Whether you're young and you haven't even started saving retirement, or you're a senior and you saw your 401k and pension suffer during the Great Recession. Uh, so I want to thank you all for the opportunity to be here today. And I want to talk about solutions, and I want to answer your questions. And let's get together as Democrats and win this seat and win back the House. Thank you.
Sendung. <lacht> Gern, sehr sehr gut, please. Good evening. I want to thank you all for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about me. I've had many different roles in life. I've been a small business owner, so I know the struggles of what it's like to try and grow your business. I've worked a late shift at a manufacturing plant, and I've seen technology replace people in their jobs. I know the lack of health care insurance, and you know, my family put a burden on all of us. They even forced us to send a relative to Mexico to seek treatment because insurance was just too high for them to, to cover. I know firsthand many of the struggles that the people of the 39th District have. I've lived through too. People ask me, why am I running? And for me, it's about finding another way to serve. My grandfather served in World War II. My father and my uncle served in Vietnam. And I knew from a very young age that I would also be serving my country as well. I enlisted in the Navy out of high school. I was fortunate enough to get picked up for a program that allowed me to earn my uh, college education. The government provided me with the opportunity to get my higher education. And I believe there's a way for government to make higher education more accessible and more affordable for everyone. Education was a game changer for me. And it opened doors for me that I never could have imagined when I was a child. That is why I have invested so much in the education of others. Because I know it is the best way to uplift community, <coughs> achieve financial independence, and create the leaders of tomorrow. And while I may no longer be in uniform, Investing in education is the best way to invest in the future of America, and that is how I serve my country today. My service in Congress would be an extension of that, to ensure that we have education and health care for all, to create an edu educated workforce you know, that the country needs so that people can have careers, not just jobs. And I will work to ensure that America is once again a place that welcomes everyone, regardless of religion or their ethnic background. And we will acknowledge the contributions that immigrants make to both to our economy and to our society and treat them with respect and dignity like they deserve. Thank you. Phil Janowitz. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming here tonight. And thank you to Jody Ballman, the Fullerton College Political Science Department, and Cynthia Geary for putting this on. Uh, it's a wonderful chance for all of us to get here and talk to everyone directly. Um, I know many of you know me from the past few months, the past few years here, but for those of you who don't, uh, my name is uh, Phil Janowitz. I uh, got my undergraduate degrees at MIT in uh, neuroscience and chemistry, and got my PhD in chemistry from the University of Illinois, and then came out and uh, got tenure here at Cal State Fullerton, right here in the district. Go Titans. <laughs> and uh, uh, what I saw during my time at Cal State Fullerton was that students were struggling with more than just chemistry. They were struggling with food security, with shelter security. I had a student, a first generation college student, who was afraid to bring her parents to graduation out of fear of deportation. That's real. That's real fear that's going on in our community. We have students who are working 20, 30, 40 hours a week just to pay for school. And then when they graduate, they don't have good paying jobs afterwards to pay off the debt they incurred to even go to school. I know this because I've been writing their rec letters, I've been calling their employers, trying to give them references to get them good jobs. And it is hard out there. And what I've seen from this community is that we want good quality education, affordable health care, and we want good middle class jobs for working families. And on November 8th, uh, when my wife and I, Angie, when she and I were watching the returns uh, come in on election night, we were getting more and more upset. And when my head hit the pillow that night in our house in Buena Park, I knew that I had to run for Congress right here in the 39th because we need a champion for our community that fights for our values. So thank you very much and I look forward to talking to you more tonight. Thank you all. Uh, so the first question goes to Gil. Uh, what is the most important issue in the 39th district? I believe, you know, well, three things that I'm going to focus on as I go to Congress. Education, health care, jobs and the economy. The jobs and the economy are kind of kept together. But really, education, I think, affects it all. Education is the, uh, the driver for us. It really leads to the jobs. It's the technology that we need. It provides us with a way 
to, to enter the, the jobs of the future. 60% of the jobs going into the future, by 2020, 60% of those jobs are gonna require some college. Some college, 60% of those jobs. So we need to change the way that we are educating our work. We need to provide them with the technology that's needed so that they can go into these jobs knowing what they do. We need to look at places like Singapore, which is, as an example, Singapore was a small, little, poor Asian country. But with the investment that it did in education, it was able to transform not only its educational system, but its economic system, and now it's a technological powerhouse. So I, going forward, you know, think that education needs to be the, the, the main issue that I will work on and I will focus on to make it more higher education, more accessible, and more affordable for everyone. Thank you. Philip. So the number one thing I've seen going around this district the past few years is education. Uh, this morning I was at Mount Sac and at uh, Cal State Fullerton this afternoon, now Fullerton College here tonight. That's what we're seeing. Good education is what leads to better jobs. And whether that's in graduate school, four-year school, two-year school, trade schools, apprentice programs, we need a more educated workforce. And when we're telling people that they need to be more educated to get a good job, we're telling people it's on them. We're saying, yes, you need an education. By the way, pay for it yourself. That's, that's not right. That's not right when we're telling people that education is necessary, but only those who have a lot of money and who take out a lot of loans are the ones who are gonna get that education to, go well, to do well in the workforce later on. That's not what we need. We need to have better investment on the federal level for our, our education programs in higher education, K-12. Um, for our apprentice programs, I've been touring many of the apprentice facilities for our trades here in the district, uh, carpenters facility, sheet metal facility, and their educational systems are phenomenal. The way that they're training the sheet metal workers of tomorrow, the carpenters of tomorrow, is amazing, and they deserve to have more funding for their programs. So those are the things that I'm going to be working for. So the number one in our district is on education and fighting for that in our community. Thank you. To me, I agree with both what Phil and Gil said. More broadly, it's about the American dream and just the challenges that people are facing. Just the challenges that people are facing in terms of getting ahead. You know, uh, I spent, before I joined the clean energy industry and focused on creating some of those jobs, I worked in the Obama administration where we spent eight years focused on how to improve and bring back that American dream. It starts with an education. It starts with investing in kids so they can learn. I spent one summer teaching in a classroom down at St. Catherine's Military Academy, down the street in Anaheim. My brother's a principal in a Title I school in Baltimore. You gotta get back in the classroom there, you gotta invest in early education. And more so, we gotta create jobs, and good paying jobs. Here in Orange County, unemployment's 3.8%. In LA County, it's roughly about 4%. Jobs are being created, but they're low paying jobs. They're not the high quality jobs. We need to actually reinvest in good paying jobs so you can afford a home, so you can retire securely, so you can actually build for that next generation. And that's what I did in the past two years working at Clean Energy. When I was with Solar City and then Tesla, which is the number one manufacturer in California, we were all about creating jobs. And that's what's gonna unify this district and that's gonna help restore the American dream because that's what's slipping away. And that's where the anxiety is. People just want that shot to get ahead. It starts with that good early childhood education. It goes into college and making sure that you don't have too much student debt so you are always paying it back and can't make those life decisions. But then it goes back to the basics, child care costs, and what that means in terms of your budget, and whether or not you're gonna be able to buy a home, and health care, what are those out-of-pocket expenses? Are you gonna be able to afford it? When I was working in the US Senate, we worked on the Affordable Care Act, and for us, it was about how do we lower those health care costs so that people can afford their daily lives. Thank you. Thanks. So, we'll start with you. Obviously, Royce has a large number of supporters. What is your strategy to convert GOP voters to vote for a Democrat? Or will it work to only increase voter, voter turnout for Democrats? I think it's both. Oh, sorry, we're starting with that. I'll take this one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, definitely what we've seen in the last election is that Hillary Clinton won our district 51 to 42. That's just a fact. Hillary Clinton won the district. However, Ed Royce won 57 to 43. So the key thing we need to do is to look at those Clinton-Royce voters. And I've already talked to about 75 of them to ask them exactly why Hillary Clinton, why Ed Royce, 
And the big thing that I've been hearing is I've been knocking on those doors in Diamond Bar and Hacienda and uh, Buena Park, is they've been telling me, hey, Hillary Clinton, she, she likes immigrants and she doesn't want to take away my health care. All right, why Ed Royce? Well, he just seems like a nice guy. <laughs> yep, that was my response. <laughs> and, and all it took was just a few minutes of talking of, well, here's what Ed Royce has voted on. Here are the votes that he, he voted to take away our health care, my health care. I'm on the ACA. My wife is on the ACA. He voted to take away our health care and put more of us in, bang, in danger of bankruptcy because of a medical necessity. He's voting for uh, in sponsoring English-only legislation. So they said, really? Uh, give, me, give me more cards. I, I, you know, talk to my friends. So Ed Royce's uh, appeal is a mile wide, but an inch deep. And we're already putting those cracks in it with our uh, campaign right now. So a lot of it is going after those Clinton Royce voters. Thank you. Yeah, your turn. Oh, I'm sorry. Sam, your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that, earlier. That's okay. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, in my brief one second statement there, it's both. It's, you got to talk to everybody because we're all in the same community. We're all sharing the same ultimate values. People just want a shot to get ahead. They want the next generation to get ahead. And so it's about talking about what's their concerns. You're a small business owner. Let's talk about help, a small business owner of Walnut. Let's talk about how you, you know, are gonna grow your business. What do those healthcare costs look like and how to help bring them down? What, you know, what's some of the red tape that we can all agree on? You know, you're a student, Cal State Fullerton. Let's talk about student debt and let's mobilize you on the kitchen table issues you care about, which is really just trying to get ahead and graduate and get a good job. I think as Democrats, sometimes we forget to talk about the things back in the basics and in communities. And so a lot of this campaign is going to be about going neighborhood to neighborhood in each city in this and organizing the good old fashioned way. It's going to be about house parties. It's going to be about asking people questions. It's about learning from them and figuring out a way that we can all work together. Because that's what I think people are looking for today. Donald Trump's a very divisive president, but we're not a divided community. And so a lot of this is about bringing us together. And I worked on the Obama campaign. I saw us turn states around. I was there in Virginia when we won the state for the first time since 1964. And the way we did it on the Obama campaign was good old fashioned community organizing and also giving them a dose of hope. Because people want to get ahead. People want to be hopeful. And as Democrats, we've got to give them something to be for, because otherwise they're just going to go back and go with Ed Royce, because that's what they've been doing. And then, you know, the last part is mobilizing people and energizing them and then investing in to turn them out. Thank you. And now, Gil. So the surprising thing about this district, and I think it surprises a lot of people, is that this district is now about as much Democratic as it is Republican. And so I really think what we need to do is really focus on getting the people out to vote, is getting out there, knocking on doors, just organizing with people, meeting with the different groups that are out there, working with people to bring the, you know, the Democratic voters you know, out to vote. I think we need to work with the independents. We, I think the Hillary, uh, the vote that it went for Hillary, as uh, Phil said over here, it really is about mobilizing those people to make sure that they vote Democratic this time and stick with the, uh, the Democratic principles. That's the way that they're leaning. They voted for Hillary, they're going to vote. We need to get them now to vote for, uh, well, for myself personally. The, uh, we need to really get out there and kind of move and get people out to vote. I think. Um, There'll be some converts, I'm, I'm, you know, I think there'll be some people, I think there's a lot of people that are really frustrated with Ed Royce because he hasn't, you know, he's not only not holding town halls for us, but he's not speaking to anybody. He's not speaking to the Republicans, he's not speaking to the Democrats, he's not speaking to independents. And I think the time has come for him to go, and I really think the Republicans are frustrated with him just as much. I think we just need a candidate that can go out there, show them the way, be a leader to the people, organize them and bring them out to vote and then I think we can be victorious. I personally think that person is me. Okay, so now we start back with Sam. What are your thoughts on the single payer health care system? How many people know someone on Medicare or on Medicare themselves? Just raise your hand. I think pretty much everyone. How many people know someone who hates their Medicare and wish they didn't have it or wish it wasn't an option? Keep your hand up. Not a lot of folks. You know why? Because since the 1960s, Medicare has worked. I spent the last two years in business. And what we've been doing, in, you know, what you do when you're in a company like a solar city or just trying to grow, you have to invest in what works. And then you scale it. 
That's why I support Medicare for all. Because you got to scale it. It works. What people want from their health care is, can I afford it? If I get a pre-existing condition, will it get taken away? And if my child gets sick, are they going to have the best health care in the world? That's really what the concerns are in health care. And to me, the best solution for that is Medicare for all. We may not get there right away, so we got to focus on the improvements. My sister has a pre-existing condition. The out-of-pocket costs are just making it harder and harder for her family with two young boys to get by. We've got to control that. What Trump Care, or whatever we're going to call it these days, Ryan Care or Royce Care, is doing is it's going to make it harder for families to get ahead. It's going to make it harder for families, but they're going to be concerned if they can afford it. They're going to be concerned if they get sick. And no one's actually talking about prescription drug prices. So I say let's go with what works, Medicare. Medicare for all, and it's going to be hard. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of door-to-door -door knocking. But I think we can do it because, again, we're the party of big dreams and bold ideas, and we need to get back to being that way. Thank you. So, Gil, same question. What are your thoughts on single payer health care system? So, right now, I look at the now and what we can do and need to improve health care right now. And I think right now, our best option is to, to stop this Trump care or stop whatever we're calling it, whether it's a Senate plan, a House plan, um, whatever plan they might come up with tomorrow. We need to stop you know, President Trump and the Republicans from pushing forward any care plan that they are doing because it's going to just be devastating if people lose care. The best option I think we have right now, and I'm looking at this like you know, at the now, the best option we have right now is to fix the Affordable Care Act. I think we can provide it, um, you know, fulfill the promise of, of having the uh, public option that was eliminated at the beginning. I think if we can go back to the drawing board to the bill that will insert the public option to the Affordable Care Act, we can help stabilize some of the prices for the uh, health insurance. I think we need to negotiate with the drug company to help bring the price down pharmaceutical drugs. I think, um, you know, those are the things that we can do now, and that's what needs to be done now. I see uh, universal health care, I see that as being something into the future, something that we can work towards, but right now I think it's better that we walk, you know, work on what we can fix now, and then keep working and progressing towards that universal health care where we'll definitely have a system where everybody can be fair, covered by a medical. Thank you. So. So I've got 90 seconds, so uh, do I like single pair? Absolutely, freaking lovely. <laughs> Let's see, I've got a few more seconds, okay. Um, so that single pair is, is definitely where we need to be going. Absolutely, you know, we're seeing that on the state level here in California, and we're seeing that, um, we're seeing on the national level with HR 676, the Conyers bill, uh, trying to have uh, Medicare for all, universal health care. Um, unfortunately, that's been stuck in subcommittee for a while at the national level, and we need to have good discussions about that. Because uh, we have the great idea of it. As a scientist, we need to be pragmatic. I know we always follow the data. So what we see in HR 676, which we need to work out, is how to pay for that. The two big costs right now in HR 676 that I would love to be working on in a year and a half, yeah, about a year and a half, would be looking at number one, the cost of actually setting up that single payer system. To, in order to get that system set up, it's going to take some time. Now, we have the Medicare uh, idea to borrow and uh, get some ideas from that, and that's a, that's, that's a good starting point. I love that. Now, setting up the system is number one. Number two is also part of the reason why healthcare is costing a lot is personnel costs. There are a lot of people who, if we go straight into single payer right away, they're going to lose their jobs instantly. And when they lose their jobs instantly, unemployment goes through the roof and we have another recession. So what I like in HR 6